Okay, Kevin's back. So this is the transmission. It's not back. But, uh, you ready? Yeah. We're gonna split this thing apart and see if we can find out what's wrong. I'm kind of excited about this. It's been bothering me for years. I have a feel like it's the input shaft up here. That one of the clutches on there or the return, those are maybe return springs that we found in there. That's my gut feeling, but uh, we're gonna open it up and find out. Nice, there we go. All right, so to get this thing apart, we're gonna take this stuff off the back, take this yoke off and, well, I'll take that pump off. And then we're gonna roll it on the back. And then you gotta split it here, take that off. Now, it's got some shifters on one side and some on the other. Shift rails stick through, so this is gonna be the trickiest part. You gotta knock these shift forks in, and then as you're lifting it, you gotta get those shift rails back through there, and they're likely gonna be stuck. So hopefully a little WD-40 yeah. and uh, they'll come out of there. That's that's the plan. Okay. All right, so we're not gonna video take taking the simple stuff off like Kevin, what like Kevin just said, because if you can't do that, you probably shouldn't be tackling this, but we'll get into the nitty and gritty um, and the important stuff so the video's not eight hours long. There we go. All right, so I marked them all so that they all go back in the same way they came and uh, Take this off, drive roll pin out that out. This slides out and then shifter fork can come out of the rails and now that can separate without binding on the shifter forks. Right. I don't know, but it's gonna be fun getting that lined up back together. I got the manual, I'm sure somebody thought about that before. Well, they designed it this way. Some <laughs> smart engineer designed it this way, so it must work. <laughs> Here we go, it's sitting uh, It'll probably sit like this until it's uh, all apart. But the, I took a pump off the back and I took the bolts. I was smart enough to take the bolts that went this way out. Although, I guess this, this way right here. So pump off and, and now that, 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 this, that, and this. And then this is where the issue is going to be is getting those guys through. So I'm going to clean those up with a wire wheel. Okay. And hopefully with that and some WD-40, they'll slide down through um, okay. while that comes off. Oh, and I got to take off this thing off too. My, my uh, high dollar cover Probably. there. <laughs> Keep the water from going in while I washed it. I make those in Holland. <laughs> <laughs> You got didn't we have some of those out already in my little baggie is that broken that's broken that's not smooth that's broken that's broken so what is that out of i could say that that's a uh, roller for a bearing if you just looked at it like this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but interesting you think that could be like a little spool it's cracked but if it was out of those valves it couldn't get into here you're thinking something wouldn't work then. <laughs> it's not newly broke. Right? No, that's no, been that wasn't us. That's been busted. So it was us. It wasn't me. It was you. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one part you can't get for this thing. <laughs> Tear it apart. Yeah. Take yeah. it apart. Uh, some off. little pieces on your pickup tube here. I can feel them. So, I know what those are from. Those are from me grinding it. Which one was this? This was just, uh, I don't know. That thing? Yeah, it drives the uh, <laughs> hydraulic pump. Okay, and that just lifts right up. Yeah, right? and I think that's your low speed, because it's a 24, a 24 speed transmission. Okay. Right, so then that gives you an extra. That's pathetic, my tank is 30. Ha, ha, ha. So that's your high, your high low clutch. So okay. that, that gives you one extra speed, right? Driving from your input, like from here to here. Yep. It drives through that counter shaft. Then the rest is the same. That's pretty much the only difference between this and a 12 speed is there's a clutch here to go high low. Uh, okay. All the rest of it's the same as a 12. And then that, which one, which one's that? That's your input shaft. Yeah. This is your low speed clutch and this is your uh, main clutch. 
Master okay. Clutch. Okay. So when you shove the pedal in, you're working this one. Okay. So this one, I think, might have some, it's dragging, I think, I don't know. So we gotta lift it out from that end, and then you gotta flip it over. Because it all comes apart this way. It comes out from the bottom. So okay. we've just got a couple six by eights on the bench. We're gonna <laughs> stick it up, and then Kevin's gonna get a ladder. <laughs> to work on the top. <laughs> We think we found where the parts are coming from. As you can see here, this one's got a like a pin there, that hole is. And this one does. Shift it. See, see the pin? And then. Right, it has a detent in it. Yeah. And this bottom one is missing. And they're all messing all the way around. So that's that pin likely broken half at that. See the hole with nothing in there? There we go. I wonder if uh, that synchro is not sitting 100% square in there and then that's dragging. Mm. Instead of that clutch. Yeah. And that's always dragging. And then that's why the rest of it doesn't shift with the hoop. And then that those clutches are like this black, right? Yep. Um, I wonder if that's what's Plug up the filters. They really want to get that one out and take that apart. Before the main clutch? Yeah, kind of. Well, yeah, we can get it apart too, but probably before that, just okay. because. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, well, if that, those, that's where the pins are missing, then yeah. Yeah. Start there. Nice. Yes, then it's only 2500 bucks. You don't need to replace all those things. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> right. Get one coming. We're getting closer. <laughs> Just keep taking pins and <laughs> bolts out and stuff keeps all falling apart. Really important just to stay really super organized. Yep. So just that you know exactly what yep. that Just don't throw it in a bench all in a heap. That's just the worst thing you can do. <laughs> so, you had to get the shifter forks out? Yeah, so. And to do that? So there's this little block that connects the two. It's like a detent block. So you can, you can only have to shift one and then the other. Yep. And so you gotta drive the pins out of that. So you got this one here, you got you got to get it high enough so that you can get it over top of this gear. Okay, and drive the pin out? So you drive the pin out, and then, that, those, and then you just slide the rails out. Okay. Top forks fall out, and then you got to take, so the, uh, the, here you go, this is the reverse idler shaft gear. Take the bolts out, you just drive it down out the back, and that comes out, just laying on the bench over there. And then uh, there's a plate that comes off of here. Then you can get this fork out, and then we're getting closer to where we want to be. I think we might just be about ready to pull the shaft out. Nice. You just kind of tip that one this way and this one that way. I think this fork here has to come out first. Maybe. Yeah, so I probably have to, uh, to just take these bolts out and just pull the shifters out. Okay. Hey, this one's kind of in our way here, so I'll do the same thing there for a minute. Just drive it out and then we can really get this one out. Then we should, then we should. One thing we messed up on was the shifter definitely mark where those go yeah because well, I marked, the holes are I did a lot of marking but I didn't mark the shaft so that was dumb <laughs> yeah because these oh, these shafts um, the holes were different the holes spot. are different because of uh, the, the oh we'll the figure that out yeah, it's not just drilling your hole <laughs> just just adjust the cable for whatever it's yeah, going right yeah so yeah this this sinker though this is the one that is in question see it doesn't it just, that doesn't feel kind of like good. It just flops around, right? To like these ones, they have like a, like see that one's locked in the, in the position, right? Yep. This one is just a, all over. These ones are locked. Yep. Right. Nice. So we found a problem, the problem, a problem. Yeah. I don't know, a problem. So that's probably where most of our big pieces are coming from. And uh, so we got to take this shaft out so we can get it all apart problem is with big tractors it's nice but all the parts are big and heavy and expensive yeah and expensive too but everything else though looks really good the gears all look nice and sharp yep. and bearings all look good well it'll be interesting to see what the uh gears look like where these shift onto right like the where the collars slide on to lock on yep because it's been grinding for Right a year, so it, it could be it could be tight, it could be rough. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Good. 
Okay, so um, to get that out, yeah, you just tilt it. Oh, you got, no, those are bolt heads. Okay. Yeah, you tilt that over until this one just clears here, and then you can kick it over and get it out. It's kind of a crappy way of doing things because you will leave some lines on the bearings, but they're just little marks. They're not anything horrible. So this one you can see down in there, and I knew that that baby's been grinding for a while. So that's uh, I think that's first, and this other one's reversed. I don't know. This this one has been horrible to shift forever. And uh, yeah, we can see why this. Is. You got your phone out of the way. You got my phone out of the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can just see the teeth back there. They are chewed bad at the camera. And this thing, the de the detents are out of it. So this thing's just been flopping around on its own. Yeah. So um, once we get it apart, you'll see. But all the teeth are definitely chewed. Well, they're chewed a bit too, but not near as bad. They need to be replaced too, though. You think so? <laughs> it's easy to say replace it when it's not your money. <laughs> You got all this effort. Well, I don't even know those suckers are available, right? So yeah. So that's going to depend on price and availability. And what we can salvage out of the other one. Yeah, because that, those two teeth are connected to that. Yeah. And that, and that. Here's our theory. So those little springs and pop that were out of there, I'm assuming that was in side of there right because that's something something there's a detent in there somewhere to hold things yep right so that's where we're assuming that's from and those pins broke and then we're, we're thinking is is when this thing's in neutral this thing can still freewheel because there's no detents and then it could it could drag and it could drag a little bit of power and make a make it crawl when it's oil's thick or make it impossible to ship this one because this one's not sitting in neutral. It's still trying to drive a little bit. In theory, just being burnt, the sinker lining was shot, but the gear should be okay. Yeah, but the sinker lining wasn't, whole, yeah. But the farther down we went, the worst, like the top was okay. I have to have a look at it. But that thing, everything is stuck, right? Everything yeah. is seized. So. Yeah, but the gear. Yeah, I don't think they took the temper out of the gears. No, no. And then uh, we'll take the main clutch apart just to see what the, just in case, because if the discs were warped, it would have the same symptom as what right. this is doing. That's definitely broken. That, but we want to check this out because yeah. why would you not? We're here. Yeah. Those will probably stay put. There's nothing wrong with them. They were yeah. This up. is just a straight old counter shock, right? Like it's just big old gears as long as there's teeth not falling off. And this is your, uh, I think, A, B, C, D. Right, that would make sense. This is output, and they always shift a great. That's kind of it's just your range. You normally shift that first, and then you run your speed. So these are all never had issues with those. So I think this one is yeah, they're all they're all hanging together. So hey, that is a lot of work for one synchro, but I'm happy that it's not four. <laughs> Okay, so this section of the shaft gets pulled this way, and then there's a collar in the middle, that's part of the shaft, and then this part of the assembly gets pulled that way. Are you pulling the entire shaft or just the half that you're working on? Well, we'll start with the half we're working on. The other side, like, I don't know, like, I don't see any reason why to pull it apart. No, it looks so, good, so, so you the bearings know, all look good, no uh, burnelling on the races. So, three jaw puller, got a cheapy Amazon. Or did that pop these seals in the... <laughs> That's pretty tight. <laughs> That's tight, all right. <sighs> it's always scary. But can you imagine doing this with your little steering wheel puller? I got the bearing to pull it. Yeah. 
I think you has seen better days. Yep. We just got Vince to weld a little point, take a little point on there, and then you just sit there to watch a movie upstairs <laughs> with a file. This snap ring is very heavy duty. Here we go. One screwed up synchro. Yeah. There should be more parts floating around in that thing because there's three pins that are missing, isn't there? The baggie that I saw, you had. Yeah, but not that many parts. No. No. Oh. oh. We have to go fishing. Yeah. All right, so we pulled this gear off. This isn't a beautiful looking thing. But the fun thing is, is that I had to use a brass punch to knock this off. So I had to take this ring off. And these roll pins are in blind holes. But they're really hard to come out. You got to get one of these special tools. <laughs> this one has to come out anyways, because of what, that gear is getting junk. So. As you, special, so you need a special training course to run these things. Just like that. So what do those roll pins do? They keep the... They hold the snap ring in. Like there's a snap ring that uh, holds this synchronizer, I don't know, what do you want to call it, disc or plate or whatever, to the gear. So you got to take those pins out so you can get the snap ring off so you can slide that off. I see. That's not going to go. Oh! oh, oh. Yes, they were thinking. Sweet. Oh. They don't look so good. No, they don't look so good, do they? No. I think this is where our uh, black shit's coming from. Yeah. Right? <laughs> You're supposed to see those lines everywhere. Yeah. Not just half. That one is smoked. <laughs> What's the chances that this is gonna come out here? It's just, it's just one, probably just one clutch place. That's Think so? <laughs> I have my doubts. Oh, and the steelies are rough too, which is not good. No, that is... The steelies are expensive. God. At least you can justify it a little bit, but yeah, they're all toast. Yeah, so we have to now pull that gear off and... Oh, yeah. Right. It's warped too, eh? Oh yeah, that's so, bad. <laughs> that's bad. That's the dragon. <laughs> you can use that as a frisbee. It'll probably come back at you if you throw it. Right. <laughs> Where'd all the other uh, little things go? She's just riding the clutch, or what are you doing? I guess so. Yeah. It's the kids. Blame it on the kids. I figure we, while we're here, we might as well check the low speed clutch in here, and we'll probably check out the high speed clutch in here. Because, hey, you never know. We're here now. So yeah. let's just have a quick little peek. See if there's more parts we get to buy because you know we like spending money and all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the snap ring here actually is supposed to hold a little bit of preload on the bearing, but it wasn't that tight, so it's got a good groove in it. So I'm probably gonna put a new one in there because that whatever uh, two okay. two or three thou groove is letting the preload off the bearing, so we'll put a new one on. So that that comes off, and then the uh, that big ugly hub comes off, but it's really heavy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now clutch discs. Yeah. So this is the low range clutch. So we're just gonna pull this cover off and check them out. Um, it it was no trouble, so we're assuming it's fine. But you know, it was a lot of work to get here, so why not just check it out while we're here? Yeah. Yeah. As long as you stay thing. as long as you stay super organized, you know exactly what yep. where it's not an issue. That's so. right. Just put everything back where you found it. 
Snap ring out. Snap ring out. It's really easy, right? Yeah. <laughs> just it's, pops right out. Just pops right out. Oh, yeah. Look at that, eh? Yeah. That's beauty, eh? Yeah, just like new. Yeah. You gonna keep going? Mm. That bottom one's probably warped. You should go down and check that one. Yeah, well, we're gonna go down. <laughs> we're not gonna stop. For those people that think just put new ones in, it's like every part on this thing is hundreds or thousands of dollars. Yeah. And and the time to take it apart is actually not that bad. It's, That's an interesting one, eh? Yeah, usually there's steel. Yeah, it's got a steely oh. slash nice. steely slash friction combo. Right interesting. On. Back together. Look at that. Look at us making way. Got parts already. Just stick her back together. And so this is the the low clutch and we didn't have any trouble with the high low it was working fine but yeah but now we get to try and uh get that great big heavy thing right back in there again on and line up all these teeth again nice. that's for the fun part transmission of a burnt tractor bought this a year ago thought we'd get some decent parts out of it but recap we got hosed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hopefully this we can use a shifter fork that's pretty much what we're hoping for we found used parts, good used parts, from somewhere else that we're gonna go with, so. But they don't have a shifter fork. Torchy torchy? Yeah, torchy torchy. Nice. <laughs> so flammable. Well, I was soaking it with diesel fuel so it would stop rusting. See if that uh, place wants to buy a, a shifter fork since they don't have enough. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have any parts for you. <laughs> okay, so I got the fork out. Uh, I did have to drive that uh, pin out while Kevin went and got a haircut. <laughs> Why am I stuck doing this? Anyway, um, we're gonna dip that in citric acid overnight. Let that uh, clean up. I think the fork's in good shape. I like this fork shift. This fork was like. 1600 bucks and that transmission was like two grand so that's not terrible it's not a complete write-off so i don't think we can save this gear um you can see the burnelling on the race there so that's that's definitely no good can't use that one but um yeah if anybody else wants some parts there's lots of these parts they they uh there's no bugs in there we killed those so we're all set here we go all right, what are you doing, Kevin? We're washing parts. I've never heard of this before, but according to Rich, if you soak these rusty parts in citric acid, they'll come out like new. Yeah, so we got one shifter fork, a couple old pairs of ice grips, and some bricks because we want to make those uh, rust proof too. Actually, maybe I was too cheap and didn't buy enough powder. Yep. So now. Stop being cheap! What so, was that? Like $4? No, that was like. 25. Ouch. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So anyways, so now we're displace, displacing water, just like just like my parents always did in the toilet. You always throw a couple bricks in to save water. So... <laughs> Don't you get stains all over the brick? Oh, you throw in the back of the tank. In oh. the back of the tank. In a bowl. We're going to run the air. We're going to run the powder. They'll preserve them, so we we'll leave it in there and they won't be bad. It only takes a couple hours, I guess. This is what the, we should have done this to that old transmission that we got. Yeah. Oh, it came apart like nothing. Looks like the bricks are bubbling too. Yeah. You're gonna have clean bricks. He's gotta keep an eye on it for two hours, Keiko. He's gotta sit here two hours. <laughs> That's quite a bit of bubbles. Should have put an uh, underwater camera in there. Yeah, I bet you that's all the battery acid is. I think we're paying way too much. Yeah, <laughs> because that's what it smells like. Happy with that? Looks all right, doesn't it? Well, it looks all right. I was expecting better. Yeah, but, a lot better than it was. Oh yeah, well that, that's fine, but I wanted it spotless. But grab a vice car. Yeah, like that's nice and clean. Are you okay with that? 
Hey, we're gonna that. Yeah? Let's give it a little. A little uh, wire brush, yet. yeah? Yeah. Clean that hole up that shifter. Uh, yeah. Let's give it a little. Let it slide on the, on the shifter. How long has it been? Two weeks? In a couple weeks, I think. Three? Two or three. Probably three by the time we figured out what we were doing and getting the parts and getting them here and yeah so thank you to all the comments down below and on instagram and everything too um where'd you end up finding the parts so these came from alabama from sneed equipment there's a case dealer i guess there but they actually make the parts there and they rebuild transmissions so these are where we got you know he asked did you guys got it apart yet? Because I have a reman ready to go. I'm like, oh, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Forty-seven thousand U.S. Oh, so well, so maybe we'll, maybe we'll fix the old one. So so forty-seven U.S. with the exchange goes to about sixty-two. And shipping's not and free. And then and then shipping, and they want the old one. So you got to ship the old one there. They got to ship this one here. It's probably a few grand both ways. We'd be sixty grand by the time. You'd we're be dying. seventy seventy-five. I you think so. Yeah. But that's uh, more than we paid for the tractor. So if I start shopping online for tractors, I'm like, oh, I can buy a whole tractor for that. So anyways, talking to the guy, these parts are expensive. Like everything is like this is two grand. This is whatever, 1500 bucks. So he, because they redo this all the time, they had a stack of used parts. So he's like, what about some good used stuff? So really good. Like, look at that. That looks like great, right? Yeah. So we spent a lot less money and got a whole bunch of used parts. But these, well, they actually make these springs there too. Wow. Yeah. So this is for the master clutch. He says, change all the springs in the master clutch. Very important because uh, it could be dragging otherwise. Expensive mm -hmm. box yeah. of seals. The, I think I got just like this little seal ring here for the piston it costs almost as much as one of those gears. <laughs> 1500 bucks? No, it's $400 for this <laughs> seal, right? Yeah. The used gear was 700. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, adds up quick when you go, you know, 40 plus 40 plus 40 plus 40 plus 40 plus 70 plus 70 plus 70 plus 70. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to be re rebuilding it. It's not expensive. Not rebuilding it. Oh, yeah. We're <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not a rebuild. It's a fix. So, if we were to do a complete rebuild, like they do, and start going all new synchros, all the gears to the ground. Uh, all new bearings, all new seals. We'd be hitting forty-seven thousand US pretty quick. You can see that the, the price is. Yeah. It very... sounds expensive, but when you start pricing parts, that's where they got to be. Right, so. and the uh, the convenience is that you can have a fully painted sealed box with one like, year warranty. With one year warranty in like four days. So yeah, however long it takes them. They got them sitting there. You want one? They'll yeah. send one on the way. Yeah, so that's what so. you're paying for. We are going this route. Um, so definitely check them out. Um, but so they said they're rebuilding transmissions usually about eight thousand hours on them. Okay. So we got about half that. So like our bearings all still look good and everything. So if I could, you know, if I put two hundred hours a year on. If I get two thousand hours out of this fix, that's ten years. Very good. By then we'll be driving electric tractors. <laughs> <laughs> Which plate is this? This is uh, I don't know. One of the gears we're changing. <laughs> Hit her home. Make it flush. Well, no, we gotta. Yeah, make it flush. <laughs> Start over. That might even be in just a touch. It's. That's good. Now you got three more. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, the snap ring's not going to pop out of there, that's for sure. Good thing we have all these big bags, so those we'd lose them all. Yeah. That's why the, the part was cost 37 cents, but the ba the packaging cost $2. Yeah, the price of oil. Oh, oop, crooked. It's the guy running the pliers. They are pretty spectacular pliers. I think your next Princess Auto trip, you should come home with some new ones. Let's go down a little more. There you go. 
snap ring's not gonna fall off. Guaranteed. Oh, all right, so all those pins do is keep that snap ring from coming. This is not ambidextrous. So the, the groove on the inside, it's keeps the snap ring in place. Yeah, so this is, uh, right, this floats. Yeah. So this is what holds that. That's snap ringed into place. Okay. So it's gotta go on this way. And then the next snap ring sits in front of that. And then the next one goes on. But it just kinda. There we go. Well, I should put a little oil on there. That might make it a little easier to slide on. I'm not doubting that it's clean. <laughs> Man, there's a really nice little squirt kit. Yeah, um, <laughs> oil, lots of it. Get it all over. You want a soft mount? Yeah, I think so. I used a uh, brass punch to knock that off. All right, so gear's on, bearings on the inside, sinker on. So now we're ready for this gear, and this bearing, but we gotta heat those up. So I will get my little oven over here to do that. And then this shaft's ready to go back in. So now we're gonna start on this main shaft. So it's got these little steel sealing rings that we're gonna change, but the new ones are uh, Viton or whatever they are. So that's supposed to be the new and improved better way. I don't know, I, I kind of like steel sealing rings, but this, it, it this leaves is... room for like air. I Oops, find. right? Yeah. When you're sliding <laughs> on, right, you're sliding on and you touch the ring, it's not gonna nip a chick. Uh, nip a check out? Nip a check out. <laughs> Knock a piece out. I guess we do it. Keep in mind that whatever shaft you're putting on generally has a tapered slide. Yeah, well, that's squeeze this it together. here. So it's got to go on. So it is tapered. Yeah. But yeah, you got to make sure that there's no grooves in here, right? Like yeah. where the seals run. Yeah. Sometimes they'll wear a groove, and that's bad. Yeah. Then you get to buy one of these. Yeah. yeah. Or get Vince to weld it up. Yeah, it is. Well, it just popped on real quick. They're just, uh, but they're just, I'm gonna go, if you see one seal here somewhere, they're just, can't even see anymore. Well, that's good. I guess they're working. There is a <laughs> seam there, but they just butt up to each they other. They just butt together, yeah. Uh, which, so I thought, which I thought was kind of poor design, but. It is what it is, I it guess. It right? must work, right? That's what, yeah. they, that's what they use all the time. So, and that, like I said, an engineer smarter than you and me designed this, so. <laughs> is that ready, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, look at that. Is it? Look at that. So, a little bit of preload on that. That snap yeah. ring should be a struggle to get in. Yeah, a little press on there would snap it right in. Yeah. Old, new. <laughs> how, how confident are you? Like I said, an engineer a lot smarter than you and I designed the upgrades. Yeah, but the engineer that came up with the rubber one thinks he's smarter than the one that came up with the steel one. And the engineer said- So you think they came up with the rubber ones because they're like, these transmissions are lasting 8,000 hours. That's way too long. <laughs> I think the marketing department got into it and said, you know, we can save a lot of money if we replace that with a um, rubber one. We can sell a lot more parts if we uh, yeah. had them leak and blow so up. So it's fine if it works. But like, yeah, you drop it on and a little nick or a cut. I think the steel one. You gotta be kind of careful to make sure you get it in the... So that you don't roll it. Roll it, exactly. And I got it a little bit rolled here. If you just, there you go, yeah. bidding. That one's steel. Just gonna stay even. Oh, okay, so. we gotta. Okay, so two of these pins have bigger holes. Yeah. So they're not the hard way. It is easier to take all the pins out and drop the piston in. <laughs> Only if you line up the big holes. With the big holes. <laughs> the big holes. 
And which, the book, oddly enough, does not say anything about that. This is shove it in. <laughs> so we shove it in. Lunchtime. What are you cooking? And so we're having gears for main course and bearings for dessert. Nice. <laughs> looks, looks like it fits properly. You might want to insulate that a little bit. Yeah, well, it's just a little insulation right here just to keep the heat in. <laughs> my... Okay, you go for lunch. I'm, I'm going to stay in the shop in case uh, you burn down my nice. This is an actual brick. So what, what, what was the recipe? Was it, was it free heat for 300 or 350? 350. 350? Okay. If you do 700, you can do it in half the time. Yeah, but then we take temper of the bearing. <laughs> Kevin had the book at home, and it said it's only supposed to be 250 degrees. So we got it. Start to warm up. It's not smoking yet. That's good. <laughs> there we go. These steel plates come in different thicknesses. You got 7.2s and 6.8 millimeters. Um, the idea is, is that that is how you shim up this pack. And all the clutch packs I ever put together is you fill it and then you measure it and then you put some shims in. So this one is you put it together and then you measure it and then you find out you need some shims. So then you have to go and get rid of your 6.8s and find some 7.2s. So we have some 6.8s in it that were previously. So as we're going to do some 6.8s, some 7.2s and hopefully it works out. We're going to check that in a bit. We're putting all new springs on those bigger, those bigger ones all new springs because that is a big problem the old springs get worn out and then they uh, don't separate the plates and your clutches are dragging so that could have been the issue the more used parts yes we're putting in used clutch discs they've got lots of life in them yet um, the rebuilders they put new ones in if you're putting in new discs you have to let them soak in oil first before they Manufacture these things, they I guess they punch them so there's a bit of a rounded edge on the one end. You want that edge up. I'll make putting that uh, thing in there a lot easier the inside. I think I got one in upside down to be honest with you. That's a big difference. That's a big difference. But how many coils are they? Like it's a thicker spring to begin with. Well, they make these springs now, so maybe it's their heavier springs. Yeah. That's crazy. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. The question of the day is, how do we know if the inside is cooked? <laughs> Hot enough? Is it smoking? It's warm. It's warm. Is it hot? Well, you don't want it too hot. Is it the right way and the wrong way? Yeah, right way is this. The right way is the way we're gonna put it on, of course. Okay. Which is the detent. Look at that. Oh yeah, perfect. It's like we knew what we were doing. Next course. Now nah, that fits a little bit better in here. That the will, bearing holds the. That holds everything press? on. Yeah. Okay. Remember we put, we pressed everything off and then right. snap ring and then in. Nice. Yeah. Another nice long break or read the book. <laughs> Look at that. That's how she's done. <laughs> Just like that. Snap ring before you forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this shaft's going back in. Yeah, so new synchro. New use synchro. Oh, okay. Use synchro. New to me synchro. <laughs> Reverse. Uh, yeah. First. First. So these are all used? This is original. Wait, this is out of my... Yours? This, yeah. This is the, just the, uh, this gear spline of the shaft. So oh, whatever, right. right? This is the... Yeah. One gear we changed. This is the other one. Yep. That's the synchro. Bearing, snap ring. Pretty straightforward, right? Oil. So 
Loctite. And just hit that fork with the wire wheel. That turned out nice. Yeah. So 18 hours to pull that transmission apart for the shipping and the cost is well worth it? Um, no. <laughs> but if we would have had more parts out of it, we could have got like reversing reversing first gear or something out of it. Or yeah, a sinker, or a sinker out of it. We'd have been laughing. Yeah, you mean something else. So. Anyway, so what's next? Uh, I'm gonna put this uh, idler gear back in there and that plate on top. And then we're ready for the master clutch shot. So we're gonna have to set that up then. So, okay. Busy putting things together, reverse idler in. So seeing how we're not changing gears, our bearings on this one, they were looking really good. We just used the same shims. Same with this gear down here, put that pin back in. Um, gotta be careful that when you're putting everything together, you're not, you don't push that pin out the bottom. So I just use the bolts to kind of hold it and just slowly pull it together. Still turns? You know what? I don't <laughs> there still turns. Yeah. So the, the shift uh, fork, so this is what we're throwing away. See, they're all marked. This is the first reverse shift fork. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, so they were smart when they built those. And then the rails, the speed one, the detents are closer together. And these are farther apart. You have detent here and there. So that's, otherwise you could mix those up and then it's probably not going to work so well. No. Loctite. Nope. No, torque too. Uh, these were 80, and these were 45 or something. Definitely have the book. Don't even attempt this without the book. I gotta torque this one yet. Yeah, yeah. but don't, still don't, don't attempt to do this without the manual. <laughs> yeah, it's online, cheap. Yeah, um, like four people sent us the PDF for free afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> nice, okay, right. so what's next? Uh, well, the next thing, I guess, is the main shaft. Okay. So we gotta set that clutch up. Then we can drop all that in. Nice. Starting to look something again. Yeah. Sweet. All right, so we're gonna reassemble this. So this, we might be doing this three or four times. You have to put uh, the bearings and retorque these bolts, put the hub all back in, and then we have to put air pressure to it, and we have to measure our piston travel. And if it's too much, then we get to trade some of the thinner plates out for thicker ones. And if it's too little, then uh, we gotta trade some of the thicker ones out for thinner. So hopefully it's good out of the gate. Otherwise, maybe we have to do this one more time. Yeah, but if get... our math works, we'll only have to do this one more time. If our math is no good, we'll be doing this multiple times. <laughs> yeah, but you get quicker every time you do it. So. Yeah, <laughs> well, the bolts wore out. Like <laughs> Had an issue. It wasn't working. So I pulled the plate out. I put oil on the on there to see if we had any piston seal leak. But now it's the air and it's it is moving. So now we'll put everything back together and see what clearance we have. And then take it all apart. Put the right plates in. <laughs> put it all back together again. Okay. All right, so we put the air to it. We got this to lock up. Put some feeler gauges in there, add and try and do everything with two hands. I could use a third one. Uh, Rich, hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I got 6.27 mils. Uh, gap in between the bottom plate and here? Yeah, so that's okay. your travel, right? Yeah. You can just measure in there. And then uh, we need seven to eight mils, so that means I have to swap out two of the 7.2 plates for 6.8s and then that should give us 7.07 .07. and then if you get a little bit of wear it'll go up so i think it's better, better to be on a little bit on the tight side maybe okay. yeah well you don't want to be too tight because then it drags and it doesn't shift yeah too loose it slips all right we think we got it set up so i had it in there we we're adjusting put some air here i'll show you Air to that port. That's what you got. That's seven and a half mil. You need seven and 
to eight. So we're good. Seven and a half millimeter? Yeah. Because you got it, you want to have it when it's, it's got to be able to free go. a centimeter. That moved more than a centimeter. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. 7.2. And it doesn't quite fit. Or you can maybe, then maybe on the other side we can jam. Right, well, there's, there's the gap in between. There. Right. right. Yeah. So, I had it down to seven. So, I had the springs in there and I checked it all. And my question was, because with so much spring pressure on it, it's hard to keep it, you're trying to you do the air and check it. Yeah, And yeah. then you lose a little bit of air and it drops off. So I had it at the seven with the springs and I thought, well, I want to make sure I'm getting it locked up. Yeah. So then I took the springs out. Then I, so answer two questions. One, I have the right distance. And two, yes, I was getting it locked up. Okay. Because if it doesn't lock up, with pressure on it. Yeah, it won't drive. It won't drive. It's a Nicola. It'll go down the hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we're only using what's your pressure set at 120? Yeah. So. so it's supposed to lock up at 80, and I think regulator pressure is over 200, like 240 or something. Okay. So if we can lock it up with, well, we doubt we're getting 120 to it, we'll be fine. Yeah. Awesome. So. All right, now I take it apart and put the springs on it. We're good. Springs in, and then, yeah, a few little parts up here. The bearing is currently being roasted for the top and then uh, it can go in. Nice. So this little collar goes on. There's a lube hole in the back side. Of course you can't see that because it's facing the wall. It's right here somewhere that you can't plug. So that's what this slot is for. And to keep that from spinning, they have a little ball that goes in here. So you have to make sure you don't lose that when you uh, take it apart. And we're gonna hopefully not lose it. We put it together. The magic of glue, also yeah. known as grease. <laughs> there you go. That's in there. And then we can carefully slide this on without knocking that out. Just like that. I think I heard it. Quick, I think it's yeah, on the, the floor. I can't turn it. It must be in there. <laughs> so, thrust bearings, bearing, snap ring, put it inside in the transmission. Good to go. Nice. Yes, it's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> nice and easy? Yeah. So we just have to flip it around. Make sure you do not hit any of those seals. Why not? I got new ones. Oh, okay. We can smash them all we want. I was not, I was smart enough to wait till we get this thing in there to change those. This doesn't fit in my transmission. <laughs> Okay, so we have one bearing that we're a little bit not too excited about. So we're gonna change the bearings on this pump drive shaft, which is also the high speed clutch. So that's this, this one and this one. So we're gonna pull those out, pull those off of there, get some new ones, heat them up, stick them on. So yeah, I probably won't video tick that. It's pretty straightforward. Take the bearings off, heat them up replace them but then you shim them up when you put the top housing on afterwards right yeah so there's a preload whenever you have two tapered bearings facing each other you have a preload on those so the cap on the top housing comes off and that's where you run your shims on and, off. Yeah, so and every we'll, shaft is the same pretty much procedure yeah. we're just gonna do the one because that's the one that's getting the new bearings okay there we go all right so we're putting some uh, new bearings on the pump drive shaft which is also the high clutch is in there on a 24 speed. And this is the coupler that runs the lube pump. And it's really easy to change if you ever strip it out. It just, you just pull this pin out and uh, away it comes. So first you would have to take the transmission out and then pull the shaft out and then pull the bearing off and then you can get the pin out. <laughs> <laughs> That's really annoying. You want it, <laughs> but it's in perfect shape. Yeah, it's in good shape. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> And we're being efficient. We got two in there at the same time. Oh, saving hydro. It's not my hydro. <laughs> but I don't know if they're warm enough yet. Yeah, this one, I guess. Is it? Nope. Oh, no, it's stuck. Yeah, it's stuck. Uh, oh, well, that's what we have the little brass punch for. All right. Well, I'm gonna go. I gotta go pick up all the exhaust and intake for that girl. So you're on your own. All right. I will uh, go pro and good luck. 
New bearings. New bearings, new races. And, new, and you guys are gonna say, why is he putting 1540 on his uh, bearings? But that's because he's got a bulk tank of hydraulic oil. Ah, uh, you ruined it. <laughs> but but by now, everybody's comments is, I can't watch this video. The guy's putting <laughs> engine oil on his transmission. <laughs> I was looking forward to those comments. I hope somebody does <laughs> well, Only half of them are going to go back and erase their comments, so. What's wrong here? There we go. Last shaft in. Nice. That actually, that looks really nice. Does it look like it's going to work? So I took a sharpening stone and just uh, cleaned up the case. We can clean the top cover yet, and then we can plunk it on. Okay, and what did you lock tight? So the races were, some of these races were a little spinny. Oh, okay. So I use this... Uh, Retaining compound 609 green. Meant for races? It's meant to turn slip fits into press fits. Oh, okay. Used it lots. <laughs> okay. So, got all new rings on here? Yep. Nice. Lots of oil laying on all over everything. And it's pretty straightforward. Anything you gotta know? And, well, the only thing is when we uh, you have to put these back together. So remember we took these all apart on the way together, oh, on yeah. the way apart. So you put them, I guess we didn't have to take them all the way apart. You just gotta slide them out like this. Yeah. So they can go in. So you got them in, back in the right spot? Yeah, so this one is offset. So like, it, so cause I, did, I marked these and I marked these and I marked this, but I didn't mark that. And that was a mistake. But this one, cause this is in the way, so it has to be, oh, it's, I see. it's only gonna fit one way, so. Okay. Do a little bit of looking, and double checking, and double checking, yeah. and triple checking, because we don't only want to put this thing on ones. Yeah. All right, so we'll pick it up, dangle it above, and uh, we'll drop put, it on. Well, put a little bit of RTV on them. Not RTV. Well, whatever. This five one eight anaer anaerobic sealer. Wherever it went. This? No. <laughs> okay. Nice. So five one eight. I it's. You also have 515 where we use in all the other tractors, but this stuff is... But they didn't send me a little... Didn't send you a nozzle? No. <sighs> so that was kind of annoying. Cut back. Guys, we just measured the top case on either side, try to get it as square as possible. Got that pretty good. Because those shifter rails got to slide through. So if you're right. not straight, it's just going to bind. Yeah. Clean and dry. Put the ceilings on it. Definitely comment whether he used too much or not enough. Always too much. So <laughs> Kevin is generous with his seal. I don't <laughs> like leaks. <laughs> Buy the little tubes. Yeah, but it, it was gonna take cost me uh, to buy two tubes, two little tubes. I could have bought one big one. I'm just making fun of how much he uses. So we don't know if the shifter. I think it's in there. Turn it. Well, we might have a... Yeah, that, that's in the one gear. Yeah, all right, that yeah. one's in the right spot. I'll just slid right in like a split. That sounds good. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, this one won't turn now, so that's good. Yeah, that's because you're locked up, that's good. Okay. There you go. That's because it has its range. There we go, that's doing something. All right, sounds like it's making all the right noises. Yeah, sounds like it's making the right noises. This one is a lot more, that's the one that we're having trouble with, reversing them first. Yeah. It's uh, more solid, so. Saw the shaft move there, so you did something. 
bearing gear. Nice. I think we're good. Nice. All right, so we're going to set up the bearing preload on the pump shaft. We put new bearings in. So you put in your original shims, and you hope that that's close because if you stick this back in without the gasket. Kind of nicer than that, I hope. And you put a little pressure on the bolts, you tap it with a hammer to seat everything, you loosen the bolts out, you tighten them hand tight, and then you measure the feeler gauge, your gap, and then you measure the thickness of your gasket. And if your gasket, so you need to, it's either gonna be the same or you can have two thou less. So if the gasket's 20 thou, so this has to be 18, more than 20, we gotta take a shim out. If it's less than 20, we have to add a shim. So hand tighten the bolts. Once you torque it down 12 with rotating it, and then back them off and just hand tighten them so it's sitting there. Go with the feeler gauge. So this one fits so tight there, a little loose there. This is pretty much perfect here. So this is pretty much what we're at. So that is. 20, 22, my gasket is 20, and we're allowed 2,000 crush, so all right. Just leave those shims in, we're good to go. All right, so that is it. As far as we're gonna take this episode, we still gotta put the pump on and a couple O-rings and stuff. We have to tip the thing up. I think because it's already nicely on a skid, we're gonna throw it in the back of the truck, take it home, and then when we boom it in, we'll put the pump on and, and whatever last little bits that are on Couple there. Couple tubes. Yeah. Dipstick tube. So, not that this was a complete how to rebuild or how to repair your transmission, but you kind of get the idea of what's involved in, in a big machine. So hopefully you guys got something out of the video. Um, we can see why they charge what they do to rebuild it. His parts are expensive. Yeah, and I don't understand why they wouldn't just put generic bearings in there that are the same. Like that that bearing does no more work than the bearing that's in that axle. And that axle bearing is like 40 bucks. Yeah, and these were 300 or yeah. some of them, some of them. Yeah, so but anyway, that's- So yeah, we set these ones up, but the, the procedure for setting up the other shafts is all the same. Right. So. Nice, right, so everything spins, everything goes into gear, so we should be good. Next episode will be us putting it back into the tractor and then running it in the field. Thanks for watching guys, uh, there's more Kenworth stuff coming up and um, then uh, more on the F350 on the other channel and just working away to try and get everything ready for Motorama. We'll see you guys April 29th to May 1st and then yeah. Get out there and work on it, because if somebody else does it, it's forty-seven thousand dollars. If you do it, it's like yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice.